Hi there, it's D here once again and I hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to talk about how to connect an external microphone to your iPhone or iPad for vlogging, movie making, voice recording or using apps such as GarageBand. And I'll also deal with various microphone connection scenarios such as 3.5mm, Lightning, USB and XLR. It's really straightforward when you know how, or is it? Let's find out. Apple devices have reasonable microphones built in. They're adequate for run and gun style voice recording or vlogging, but you'll find the quality somewhat distant and lacking any real depth. Sound really comes alive through your iPhone or iPad when you attach an external microphone. You don't have to spend a ton of money and your options are almost endless. From budget lapel mics to professional audio mics, whichever microphone setup you require, it can all be achieved with the correct ports and adapters. We're going to cover older and newer iPhones plus iPads. However, connecting a microphone to your Apple device may not be as straightforward as you think. Let's jump straight into it and look at the options we have and the issues we may have to overcome. So first let's look at the iPhone port options. For iPhone 5 to SE, you can either use the 3.5mm headphone port or the lightning port for your microphone input. A 3.5mm headphone port will only work with a TRRS jack, not TRS. If you don't know what that is, I'll explain this in more detail shortly. All iPhones from 7 onwards lost the 3.5mm port and now only have a lightning port. In the future, they're expected to switch over to a USB-C port and lose the lightning option also. Now on to iPad port options. iPads will have at least one or more of the following ports, depending on the age and the model. A 3.5mm port for a TRRS jack, and again I'm going to explain what that is shortly if you don't already know. A lightning port, or a USB-C port. So let's look at some of the port options in more detail, starting with TRRS. You may recognise this type of connection from your existing headphones. If your headphones use a 3.5mm jack, then it will probably be TRS, like on the left. If you have a headset with a microphone, then it might be TRRS, as on the right. The easiest way to tell a TRS jack apart from a TRRS jack is to count the metal segments. So three metal segments, as you see on the left, equals TRS, and four metal segments, as on the right, is TRRS. Just like in the picture. You can buy a TRS to TRRS adapter if required. Either way, you'll need a 3.5mm mic jack to be TRRS if you want to use that kind of connection. You'll need additional adapters if you don't have a 3.5mm port, which we'll come on to shortly. So on to the second port connection type. From iPhone 5 onwards and some iPads, Apple introduced the lightning connector. You'll know if you have this, as the end of your charging cable will look like the picture below. Lightning has been around since 2012 and was introduced to replace the 30-pin dock connector. It's likely to be phased out soon in favour of the industry standard USB-C. Apple used to include a lightning to 3.5mm adapter in the box for iPhone 7 and 8. So look in the box if you have one of those models, but for later models they no longer do this, so you'll have to buy one if you need it. Now on to the third port type. Modern iPads now have a USB-C port. The end of your charging cable will look like the picture below if you have this kind of port. USB-C is now industry standard for transmitting both data and power on the same cable. And the good news is, if you have a USB-C cable, you can transmit data and power on any other device with the same connection. At the time of making this video, no iPhone has this port option yet, but it's expected to become the standard on all iPhones in the near future as lightning fizzles out. Now we've discussed the port options and the connections you may encounter, let's look at a few different microphones and the connection options they present. So if you have a lapel or lavalier microphone like the one here with a TRRS jack, that is a jack with four metal segments, then this will plug straight into a 3.5mm port if you have one on your iPhone or iPad. It should work fine. Lapel or lavalier mics are most commonly used for TV, theatre and public speaking. They're small and unobtrusive and help to keep your hands free. If your jack only has three metal segments, you'll need a TRS to TRRS adapter. If you have a lightning port, you'll need a 3.5mm to lightning adapter. And likewise, if you have a USB-C port, you'll need a 3.5mm to USB-C adapter. Now let's look at USB options, such as this lapel microphone with a USB-A connector. No iPhone or iPad has a USB-A port, so you'll need an adapter of some kind. Apple's USB-A to Lightning or USB-A to USB-C adapter may be enough for your USB microphone to work, depending on your port options and power requirements. However, if you have a more powerful USB microphone, such as the Blue Yeti shown here, 
and other similar studio condenser microphones, you'll need a powered USB 3 hub to provide what's called phantom power, unless the microphone has its own built-in battery. Connect the mic to the hub via USB and then the hub to the iPhone or iPad using a lightning or USB-C adapter, as shown in the picture. Not forgetting to also plug the USB hub into your mains power supply to provide the required phantom power. Condenser microphones are usually the mics of choice for the studio and offer superior sound quality. It's also possible to connect XLR microphones in a similar way. XLR mics are what I'd call pro audio mics, that is, the type of microphones a musician would use on stage for example. The Shure SM58 mic, as shown here, is a cardioid dynamic microphone. They've been making this particular mic since around 1966, so it's certainly well thought of and popular. Considered industry standard for live performances, it's one of the best selling microphones in the world. This kind of mic will reduce pickup from the side and rear and help reduce feedback. You'll probably use this kind of mic if you are a serious musician. You might also use it with apps such as GarageBand for example. In this example you'll need an XLR to USB-A cable, then plug that into your Lightning or USB-C adapter, as shown here. You shouldn't need any additional power, such as a powered USB hub with an XLR microphone. Alternatively, and my preferred solution for XLR is Rode's iXLR digital interface for Apple devices. It's also an XLR to lightning adapter that is broadcast quality and compatible with all dynamic and self-powered microphones. It comes with a 3 meter lightning cable and there's also a handy headphone jack with a variable level so you can monitor your audio which saves you using any kind of third party splitter. So those are some common connection scenarios. It doesn't cover every scenario such as Bluetooth or connecting via a mixer but I've never had to connect via those methods either. So the examples I've shown are many of the ones I've encountered or get asked about. If you have any other examples, ideas or workarounds then please let me know in the comments. But by far the easiest way around any connection issues you may have is to buy a microphone that is already compatible with your iPhone or iPad. It will come with the correct cables, connections or adapters. You'll also save money by not having to buy additional adapters. An example of which would be the Shure MV88 Plus which comes with everything you need to connect to your iPhone via a lightning connection plus a handy tripod. It's not the cheapest option, but it's still very popular for budding filmmakers and vloggers, and you won't need to spend on any additional adapters if you have an iPhone 5 onwards. That's just an idea, there are plenty out there to choose from. Whatever you buy, if it doesn't come with the correct adapters then you'll need to buy them, but they're not usually very expensive. If you have all the necessary connections and you're experiencing errors or your microphone just isn't working at all, then it could be the fault of third party adapters. Apple's original adapters are certified and guaranteed to be compatible. They're also not that expensive. I actually use a third party lightning adapter myself which works really well, but I only bought it because the Apple original had sold out and I needed one quite quickly. I'll put links in the description below to some useful adapters and the gear I use. So just to summarize what we've already talked about, there are three main microphone input ports found on iPhone and iPad depending on the age and model. A 3.5mm port requires a TRRS jack, a lightning port which Apple will probably phase out soon, a USB-C port which may soon be on every iPhone or iPad, it's an industry standard port. It's a matter of working out what you have and if any adapters are required to make the connection. And some microphones may need additional phantom power via a USB hub also unless they have a battery, as already mentioned. I hope you're still awake, and I hope that all makes sense. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you found that useful. Please don't hesitate if you have any questions or comments, I'll do my very best to help if I can, just comment below. Also take a look at the description below where you'll find links to the various microphones and adapters we've discussed. Also the gear I use, which you may find useful for reference. If you did find this video useful, then please consider giving it a thumbs up, as it helps me a great deal if you do. If you'd like to see more, then please consider subscribing. I'm always either talking about tech or reviewing it. Thank you so much and stay safe. I hope to see you very soon.